Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Allah halal family Welcome to the channel You beautiful people I hope you guys are having yourself A wonderful day guys I'm really excited Today we're gonna get an update On Indonesia's new future capital Which is going to be moving From Jakarta to West Java So this video is by Mega Builds, And the link is in the description In case you guys want to head over To their channel And show them some love So without further ado Let's get started with this video this is Jakarta, the capital of Indonesia. Yeah, Jakarta. Million people. It's overcrowded, I miss Jakarta. Polluted, and it's literally sinking into the ocean. And this what? is sinking. Sankara, the future capital city, opening later this New year. New Santara. Already in full swing. New Santara is an and it promises to be a smart forest city with a price tag of an estimated $30 smart forest city metropolis powered by renewables and perfectly blending i would want to come and show and visit once it opens out that would be sick we're look at how southeast asia's biggest country is planning to carve out a brand new, new mega city right from the jungle and why this is not only beneficial but also problematic for sure, you know, Just it's tough for the seven days, locals. We're changing our name from top luxury to mega builds. Indonesia's newest city doesn't look like much yet, but it's going to be a game changer. On a for site sure. four times bigger than Jakarta and 40 times bigger than Manhattan, construction ah. is underway on the first of five phases, all New of which Santara. are due to be completed by 2045. It might wow, seem enormous, especially because it's only being built for less than 2 million people. But that's because 65% of the city is going to be green space with forests, gardens, and parks. Another 10% of the city will be taken up by farming, meaning that only one quarter of Nusantara will be covered in buildings. This is all part of Indonesia's that's awesome. to be carbon neutral by 2060. Can you imagine and that Nusantara fresh air there? part of that it'll be powered entirely by renewables and looks like a bird the city will be by so public cool. transport walking or cycling what? thanks to a smart public transport system you're supposed to reach everything you need, so like cool. shops restaurants and so on within 10 minutes no matter no way you live. 10 the minutes. urban rainforests that weave through the city will make New Centara feel more like something out of Avatar than real life. If the plans are That's anything cool. to go by, living here doesn't look too bad. At first, I might just move there, you never know. <laughs> like a Perhaps even it does so hollow. So to understand it properly, let's zoom out for a second and look at why exactly it's being built in the first place. Indonesia is an island nation, otherwise known as an archipelago. archipelago. In fact, it's actually the biggest archipelago yeah. in the world, with over 17,000 17, followed by Philippines the and then Japan. The capital city has been here on the north coast Jakarta. of the island of Java. But Jakarta yes. was never built to house the 10 million people that live there. 10 million solo. separate rivers run through Jakarta and flooding is a massive problem. This is made even oh. worse by poor water management. A large percentage it's of the tough. population relies on groundwater, which also comes from wells. These wells draw water from far below the city, weakening mm. the earth and causing the mm. ground to shift underfoot. As a result, Jakarta is actually sinking into the ocean. The speed varies, but some neighborhoods sink That's as scary. many as 11 inches a year, making it the fastest sinking city in the world. In 11 fact, inches a year. Of Jakarta is already below sea level. And with oceans set to continue rising, Jakarta has a major problem on its hands. Oh. Given this whole situation, Indonesia decided to build a new capital city, over 700 miles away, right in the middle of the jungle. This Borneo. is the island of Borneo. It's the third largest island on the planet, and it's covered by a massive rainforest. The island oh, is split beauty. between Malaysia and Brunei in the north and Indonesia in the south. And over here, in a region called East Kalimantan, East is where Kalimantan. Nusantara is being built. But why here? Well, the location. Sorry, is I think I said West Java, but it's Indonesia. actually East this Kalimantan. This better connectivity between Correction. the government and the many <laughs> parts of the country. At the same time, it'll also redistribute resources and people away from the island of Java, which currently makes up over 60% of the national economy. East Kalimantan is also better protected from natural disasters like floods and earthquakes that affect much of the country. I think it's higher. On top of that, the rainforest offers an enormous amount of natural resources, wow. as well as beauty, the natural Michelle. beauty and biodiversity. There's also just a lot more space, something that's severely lacking in Jakarta. It's mm. been overcrowded and sinking for decades now, which might make you wonder, why is it taking so long to start this process? 
Well, it's not yeah, easy yeah, moving a capital. capital isn't actually a new one. It was first discussed way back in the 1950s, but no one was prepared to push for it as much as the current president, Joko, Joko Widodo. Widodo. Widodo, who was a furniture maker before getting into politics, became the governor of Jakarta in 2012. But it wasn't until he was elected president in 2014 that he could nice. really make progress on his dream of a new Indonesian capital. Finally, in 2019, he officially announced the plan to relocate. So what is the vision for this new capital? 300 different companies actually submitted designs for Nusantara, but it was an Indonesian architecture and design firm, Urban Plus, who were nice. eventually selected to design the majority of the city. That's Their awesome. vision to create a city that works with the natural environment rather than against it. A smart urban landscape that captures the oh, biodiversity of Indonesia, as well as its rich cultural heritage. Nusantara I love greenery and archipelago and the make it city work clearly shows the city the and the people and capture the identity of the island nation. So let's take a look at some design details. Elevated walkways will provide links between transport hubs, allowing residents to access the fully nice. electric public transport system and avoid the hilly jungle terrain. These walkways, along with some of the buildings that are on stilts, will allow better airflow and rainwater dispersal throughout the city. It sounds rather elaborate to put buildings yeah, on for stilts, sure. but this is nothing new in Indonesia. Many homes are raised above the ground to because protect flooding. from flooding. And the same <clears throat> technique is used here in Nusantara as well. And that's Smart. not all. At the heart of the city is the Presidential Istana. Palace. This unique masterpiece will be in the shape of Garuda, a mythical bird Garuda. in the national symbol oh, that's, of Indonesia. Uh, There's also a huge statue of it in Bali, it which we've already featured in our video about the world's tallest statues. The Garuda represents knowledge, power, and bravery and its giant glass wingspan will stretch out for 177 meters as it towers oh, above Nusantara. Along this long straight road through the middle of the city, it'll certainly stand out. Then there's the Vice Presidential Palace, which was actually designed Vice as part of an open competition palace. run by the government. That's the, the first time I've heard from a company there's called a palace Shao. for Vice Presidential. <laughs> modern appearance, the design was actually selected thanks to its connection with indigenous Indonesian architecture. It's based on a classic classic building known as a longhouse and uses traditional design features that split the building into three separate oh. parts. All these renders show that the plan for the city is to integrate it into nature and preserve many green spaces. And that's definitely an advantage compared to many existing cities. Sick. They can allocate the space entirely from scratch. For a city of this wow. size, it would definitely be a new approach if Indonesia is actually able to build it. So Inshallah. how exactly God do you to realize this massive Indonesia will be able the project to build has it. been split into five phases and construction is already underway, though the deadlines are pretty tight. As we will see, certain areas such as the governmental zone will take priority and infrastructure will be upgraded as the city grows in line with the later phases. The first and perhaps the most ambitious phase has a timeline of only two years and is scheduled to be finished later this year. Later this year, no way. In two years, later this year, first phase President supposed to Widodo be completed. His office in October has made Nusantara his legacy and plans to officially inaugurate the city with the opening of the presidential palace on Indonesian Independence nice. Day, August 17th. In the first phase, August the governmental next is month. carved out of the jungle. On top of that, all the very basic infrastructure needs to be put in place before anyone can actually move in. Roads that means roads, whatnot. electricity, and water supply, as well as a core public transport system. During phase one, the Crazy. focus is on I'm the excited. So governmental zone, made up of government offices, the palaces, and buildings for branches of the army and police. The next phases of construction will have a little bit more time to come together, phase with two. four to five years planned for each separate stage. Phase two will see big mm -hmm. developments in what's called mixed use areas and is scheduled to be finished nice. later this year. This means that areas will be developed for industry and business, as well as educational institutions, food, and retail. By the end of this phase in 2029, the government plans for 1.2 million people to have relocated to Nusantara. Kind of hard to believe when you look at the building site that's standing wow. there today. 
In only five years, 1.2 million people are going to live here. Do you even think that's possible? Phase Hold 3 up. starting in 2030. Sure. We'll see the development For of sure. a mass transportation system, as well as the expansion of waste and water management projects, and a focus on mm. the economic development of local businesses. Regional railway networks will be laid nice. as part of Phase 4, as well as an extension of education and health services due to the projected population increase. The final phase of construction due for completion in time for the 100th anniversary of Indonesian independence in 2045 will involve more industrial development and a focus on stable population growth with a planned 1.9 million residents. That's if everything goes to plan, though. With only a few months to go until the official opening, it's already being talked about that meeting the deadlines might be tough. Construction has been slower than planned due to severe tropical weather and supply chain issues. Gathering all the necessary resources mm. to build a city from scratch isn't easy, especially in this jungle location. Sure. And this is where the multiple yeah, issues cool. arise. If you enjoyed this video so far, do us a favor and subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate Smash it. Smash that like button, support. guys. So Show them some love. At the four major points of criticism and problems. Firstly, there have been a lot of illegal okay. mining operations in this area. East Kalimantan has enormous reserves of natural resources like coal, oil, nickel, and gold. According to surveys from the Environment and Forestry Minister Siti Nurbaya Bakar, there are around 2,400 abandoned mines on the site of Nusantara alone. In order to continue construction, these pits need to be refilled. And although this should be done by the mining companies, the government is now largely paying for it. Secondly, funding also wow. appears to be a big challenge. 20% of the $33 billion sure. budget is coming from the Indonesian state but the remaining 80% is supposed to be financed through domestic and foreign investments. Foreign. But this is proving quite yeah. difficult. A big Japanese investor pulled out in 2022 as they could no longer agree on the investment conditions. And despite Indonesia offering tax breaks and land rights to potential investors, it seems like no major investment has been signed. As of 2023, the government said they had received letters of intent from 323 mostly Asian investors. Also, Australia has formally signed on with a relatively small investment nice. and the offer of expert technicians to help with development. Thirdly, mm. critics within the Indonesian population say that the plans have been rushed through parliament without proper oversight. And that President Widodo rushes to open mm. the city before he leaves office. The Indigenous People's Alliance of Nusantara, also called Aman, advocates for the rights of Aman. indigenous peoples. In report, they said that 21 indigenous communities live on the site of Nusantara, and they estimated wow. that at least 20,000 indigenous people would have to be displaced. So solutions still need to be found to further integrate the locals into the project. Of course, the developers are in talks, but this topic needs more attention. Many people think that the government has been pushing ahead Head without properly considering, consulting, or even informing local residents. And lastly, some mm. call into question the green credentials of Nusantara. While it is planned to operate with clean energy, only 19% of Indonesian nice. power is currently generated by renewables. That means that the enormous coal mines in Borneo will be used to power the construction of this green utopia, and the resulting impact on the local environment mm. may well be extreme. To conclude, we can say that the road ahead is not clear for Nusantara. In regard to the problems in Jakarta, it's obvious that something needs to be done. However, it remains to be seen whether this new plan is the best option. And that's why we want to hear your opinions on this. What do you think? Is Nusantara a... Okay, here's my opinion, guys. So, this is a great project. Why? Because since the, he said the 1950s the government were looking into moving the capital somewhere else because some parts of jakarta are sinking 11 inches which is almost like close to a feet every year which is crazy right like in in a few decades jakarta could be like uh, basically under the sea since it's already below sea level and plus there's 10 million people living in in such a small uh, area so why not take advantage of uh, West East Kalimantan, where there's a large area and rebuilt, right? Like like any big project, there's going to be issues, right? Like we saw, for example, with uh, uh, Lombok, with the uh, uh, racing track, right? Because of COVID and weather and whatnot, there were some delays. But I think similarly here, right? There's going to be delays. There are going to be um, the problems that they're going to face. But inshallah, you know, all of that will get uh, resolved. And uh, I think 
you know they can get it uh, completed we can see that the buildings are coming up and then they got to start building the infrastructure which like you said is a road electricity water and uh, you know I, I have to disagree with him where he said that you know maybe they're going to start using the coal to power this but Indonesia is moving away from that right so if they're going to build this inshallah they're going they can plan to build some uh, you know hydro plants so that way they can go away from the coal and start using um cleaner energy sources and at the same time it you know there's 2400 mines that are open pits and uh, that causes issues too right so now that the government is kind of getting involved and getting it closed that's also a positive so uh, a lot of cool things coming up i'm really really excited i'm actually more excited that there is actually a phase of it getting completed this year and in Indonesia's Independence Day, which is actually next month. So we're less than a month away. They're going to be the president is going to be releasing some information and whatnot. So that's awesome. I'm really, really excited. If you guys have any other updates, please, please, please put in the comment section below as I'd love to find out. Like I said, inshallah, when this city is uh, open, I'd love to go check it out because this is just on another level. Nothing in the world exists like that. And I got a lot of love for Indonesia. And with this uh, project, I'd love to be there to check it out. Be one of the first few people to check it out and uh, share it with you guys. So really, really cool, guys. And now I'd love to hear what you guys uh, think and share your thoughts with me in the comment uh, section. And as always, guys, thank you very much for all your love and support. I hope you guys have yourself a wonderful day. Take care of yourself and your family. And inshallah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care and wassalam.